this terminal block has three terminals on it, it is referred to as limit one. Limit one is paired in conjunction to motor one. These are the limit switches for your primary motor. Here I have wires hooked up from the primary motor in the order of pull to open. Please refer to your manual for an alternate wiring for push to open. I'm going to remove this terminal block so you can see the labeling underneath. Note there is OL1, COM1, and CL1. That stands for open limit, COM, and closed limit. Both limit switches inside the arm, the open and the closed limit, share a COM. These terminals are a normally closed connection. If you do not have limits hooked up to these terminals, the operator will not move. This terminal block is limit two. This serves as the input for the limit switches from your secondary motor. Your secondary motor is wired into motor two. If you trace the leads that are gonna be hooked up to this terminal, they should pair up with the two power leads that are leading from your secondary motor to motor two terminal. This has the same configuration as the limit one However, you will notice it says OL2, COM2, and CL2. Stands for open limit switch two, common two, and closed limit switch two. If you have an ES1000H, limit two will not be used. For an ES1000D, you will use limit switches in limit two or else the second operator arm will not operate. This next terminal block is photocell. You might notice we have an exaggerated jumper in here. This is for demonstration purposes. You can make this much smaller. This is your safety terminal. Notice if we take the safety terminal off, a pH comes up on the display. This stands for photocell. On the photo cell terminal, we have the terminal photo, ground, V positive, and positive 12 volt. Photo and ground are very important. These are the two terminals that we have the jumper in. If you are not using a safety device, which we do always recommend to be used, you need to install a safety jumper where the safety device would be. Once the two terminals are connected either through a safety device or through a jumper, you'll notice photo cell goes away off the display and the gate can now be operational again. If you have a safety device connected and you see pH, it is either the photo cell is obstructed and something is in the path of the gate or the wiring has become disrupted between the photo cell and the control board. The V positive terminal is a power output meant for one accessory. It is not a fuse terminal, so do not hook up multiple accessories to that terminal. It puts out 12 volts DC. The fourth terminal, positive 12 volt, is also a power output for accessories. However, this is a fused output. This one is safe to hook up the remaining accessories to that you need to get power. This terminal is your push block. Note the terminals are push one, com, and push two. This terminal block is used for devices such as keypads, exit sensors, push buttons, or any other device that is gonna open your gate. All these devices will either be connected to push one or push two 
all accessories will utilize the COM as a second terminal. Accessories being hooked up to this terminal should be dry contacts. The dry contacts will momentarily close the circuit and cause the gate to open. Push 1 and common will open the gate and close the gate. It will stop the gate mid-cycle. Push 2 and common will only open the gate. If the gate is already in motion going towards the open position, a momentary contact, contact between push 2 and common will not affect the gate. It will continue to open. If the gate is in the open position and there is a momentary contact between push 2 and common, the auto reclose time, if you have it set to auto reclose, will reset. If the gate is closing and there's a contact between push 2 and common, the gate will go to the full open position again. These two terminals can also be used with a non-momentary contact, also re referred to as a toggled contact. If you use a toggled contact between push 2 and common, it will trigger the gate to open, and as long as the terminal is toggled connected between push 2 and common, the gate will open and remain open until the circuit is reopened. The last terminal is your E-lock. has a positive and a negative. If you have a solenoid gate lock, these are the two terminals that the solenoid gate lock will receive its power from. You do not need to use a lock control board or any other device when using a gate lock with the ES1000D or 1000H. A magnetic gate lock, however, because it draws power all the time, must be used with an independent transformer. Please contact Gatecrafters for information about magnetic gate locks. However, the solenoid gate locks are the ones specifically designed to be used with this type of gate opener.